How the Pattern Grew is a pageant that was given in 1952 by friends in the community to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Heinemann Settlement School. It was written by Una Ritchie Jakob. We want to hear and see everything. Tell us about the olden days first, and all about the cloth houses, everything, right up to now. Well, the olden days, as you say, and actual years, was not so long ago. How be you? Howdy, Shade. Come in and pull you up a chair. You been up to the Forks? Yeah, I've been up the right hand a piece. Heard there was some trouble up thar to Cornhorn. Hard work and slim living ain't enough to fill a body up. My grandpap always claimed that folks ought to have left when the game was gone and looked for places in the level land. It'd be mighty queer to live where there's no mountains. No place else would be home to me. It's ridges leaning back again the sky. Everywhere a man looked a green hill and making a boundary to what the naked eye could see. So close and flinty around the body that they get into the inner vision of his heart so that sometimes he sees them and again he don't, but feels them around him there just the same, like a well-known garment worn with use. Makes me feel just the way I always do when I'm a-weaving, like I ought to catch all the pretty fine things that ever was and weave them right down in the web. Howdy, folks. Howdy, Howdy Gabe. Gabe. Nothing new up Left Hand Fork? Heard tell there's a choir woman in these parts. Calls herself Miss Petty. They say she carries a whole lot of little old bitty pokes of blossom seeds and gives them to everybody she meets up with. Is she stuck up at all? Just as common as anybody. I'm going up the creek tomorrow. If I see the choir woman and happen she give me some of them fotch on blossom seed, I'll fetch you some. Shade, I'd be mighty beholden to you. And they really came to Hazard that summer, didn't they? Yes. They lived in tents, borrowed from the state militia, and decorated with flags and kindergarten chains. The people called them cloth houses. And the teachers, choir women, because they seemed so strange to us. They taught classes in cooking, sewing, home nursing, singing, and kindergarten. There were all sorts of socials and play parties. The second summer, they came to Hyman. How did they happen to come here, I wonder? Oh, that was because of Uncle Solomon. Haven't you heard about him? There appeared in Hazard one morning an old man. Good morning. My name is May Stone. Howdy. I'm Solomon Everts from over on Troublesome. Troublesome is quite a distance away, isn't it? It's about 20 miles, I allow. I always walk barefooted. Never could get used to shoes. Well, I wanted to ask ye to come over into the valleys of the Troublesome and bring learning to the folks there. I want my grands and great-grands to have the chance I never had. That's a wonderful request, Mr. Everidge. They did come to Heinemann that next summer, the summer of 1900, and pitched their tents on the hill behind the town. It was a wonderful summer. The classes were large and eagerly attended. The people liked the kind of thing the women were trying to do. Their firm belief in the common integrity of the human spirit was a kind of religion they lived. In 1902, they returned, and that was the beginning of the Heinemann Settlement School. It was the very first rural social settlement anywhere. Health work was one of the big things from the very beginning. It is hard for us to realize that there were no hospitals in the mountains. Many clinics, eyes, ears, nose, and throat, but especially tonsil clinics were held 
So, from the very beginning, there was the continual concern with health. There was also, from the beginning, a purpose to foster and revive the old mountain hand industries. Why, here comes Aunt Cart now with a bunch of baskets. Oh, what lovely baskets. How are you, Aunt Cord? Well, I know how you and the love things folks make with their hands, and I just wanted to show them off to you. We'll take all you make, Aunt Cord. We can find a market for them. There was a coming of Mr. Cecil Sharp all the way from England to collect our songs. He got many songs right here, didn't he? Girls, I'd like to have you sing that song about the little devils to Mr. Sharp. Beautiful, beautiful. This is most exciting. Do you know I've hunted all over England for a version of that song with the whistling refrain? Either your son or your daughter I crave. How does that whistling go again? It's your old scolding wife and it's her I must have. Da 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 The later years of the school have been less dramatic, just as steady working on, turning over to the county the things they are ready to take over, and the settlement continuing with special things that will enrich the whole program. And so, from where the pattern grew, the threads lead out into an ever-widening web with tents from all our dreams and worth of what we were and are to shape the times to come. If we have sounded the nostalgic note to call up what was good and satisfying in our youth, it is not that we believe old times were best and the Nile does not have merit. And knowing this, Believe man's best is ever greater than his worst can be. Yes, all the tools of knowledge we possess, and this bright thread that runs throughout and gives such spirit to the whole, it is, I think, the gift of selfless service patterned by your founders and others in their time. Pass on, weavers of the future. <laughs>